as everyone is joining us today. So good morning, my name is Amanda Jarvis and I'm with the Virginia SBDC Network. For those of you that are not familiar with our organization, the Virginia Small Business Development Center is a partnership program between the US Small Business Administration, George Mason University and local host institutions throughout Virginia. With 27 locations across the Commonwealth, we provide training and technical assistance to small businesses in their local communities. Our one-on-one -on -one consulting services are available at no charge. Today's webinar, Let's Talk About Cybersecurity for Startups, is presented by the Virginia SBDC Network in partnership with Posture. Be sure to check out our next webinar series, It's All About the Data, on May 11th. We are recording today's presentation, and it will be posted on our website, virginiasbdc.org. Due to the large number of participants, everyone's microphone is muted, but if you have questions during the presentation, you can type those into the Q&A box. We have also enabled the live transcript function, which you can show or hide via your meeting controls. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our presenters for today's session. Kiana Ganey is a 20 plus year IT and cybersecurity industry veteran and has served as the chief executive officer for Secure Tech 360 located in Springfield, Virginia since its inception in 2010. Ms. Ganey is also the cyber industry specialist for the Virginia SBDC. William McBurrow is the co-founder and chief security officer at Posture Inc. and an innovative cybersecurity risk management company using artificial intelligence and cloud-based solutions to help small businesses simplify and manage cybersecurity programs. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Kiana. Thank you, Amanda, for that wonderful introduction and everyone welcome to Let's Talk About Cybersecurity. I'll give Amanda a few seconds to post the slides, but just wanted to welcome everyone. Um, as stated be before, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll address them at the end. Can everybody see that? Yes. All right, okay, see. Okay. So let's jump right in. So who's all excited about cybersecurity? <laughs> okay, yes, 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 yes. So for the agenda, just to kind of go over the agenda today, um, Amanda started off with the introduction. Um, we're going to go over some security considerations for you as a small business, as a startup, um, things that you can consider about making your cybersecurity program effective for your workforce and also to help with just creating a, a security posture that will help you become, help you be, help you remain competitive and also stay off the news, okay? So that's all, it's everyone's job here today is we're gonna make sure you stay off the news, okay? Next slide. So a little bit more about our introduction, all the great stuff um, about us. Um, so I won't, I won't belabor you with our backgrounds. What about Mr. Mr. William, who you'll meet shortly after my presentation? Mm -hmm. So the reality is that cyber attacks are here, right? So regardless of the size, we're all presented with these risks. Um, but the only, the sad news is that a small percentage of cyber attacks for small businesses go unreported. Um, in addition to that, we don't necessarily make the news unless our breach affects a larger enterprise. But what we, what we know is that cyber criminal, criminals do not discriminate they target vulnerable computer systems, regardless of the, the systems, the, if it's a Fortune 500 company, if it's a small business or even a home user, right? So the reality is, is that this is something that we all have to be, educate ourselves about and also find ways to protect ourselves. Because even though you may say, hey, I own a flower shop, what would they want with my flower shop? If your flower shop is taking Square payments, it could be something as simple as they want access to the Square enterprise that has millions of users. And the person that you took the credit card information, they're, they're gonna say, the last place I was at was at this flower shop, right? And so that could result in having a lot of loss of reputation from your, um, your colleagues or people that are in your business community. So some things to consider is that regardless of your size, we all face um, the potential risk of being a part of a, a, a cyber incident. Next slide. 
Sorry, I'm sorry. Something happened, hold on a second. Um, in addition to that, um, some of the recent things in the news, right? We've heard from everything from being part of the colonial pipe incident, right? Even though that happened to a large corporation, even as a regular person or even some small businesses also endured or suffered some losses because of something that happened to a larger corporation. So even though it may seem that this may be something that only happens to larger corporations, that's far from the truth, right? Um, even close to home, um, the Virginia Information Agency, um, VITA, they had an uh, incident where it affected millions of um, users, um, also had different types of uh, malware that was they had to block. So although it may seem as though it's not happening in our neighborhoods or it's not happening to people that we know or it's not happening um, where it's affecting us, it all affects us, right? So we all have to do our part to make sure that we are keeping ourselves safe, our businesses safe, our customers safe, and people that that have entrusted us with their data or the information that um, we've been entrusted with. Next slide. Uh, so some, some, some security considerations that I want you just to take some food for thought. I know it's lunchtime, so I wanna give you a little food to take away with you. Um, simple things that we can do as a small business, right? So first thing I know, I'm a small business owner. We don't want, we have so many roles and so many hats and so many things that we're concerned about, right? In addition to, we are all looking at our bottom line. So we're thinking, is this gonna cost more? Is this going to impact my bottom line? So there's some simple things that you can do. So it can be something as simple as doing software updates on a regular basis, um, requiring strong passwords with a mixture of numbers, letters, and symbols. Um, any devices that are connected, make sure that you reset the factory back password. Um, start backing up your data, test those backups. It's one thing to have backups, but if you're not testing those backups, where well, you need that backup and you find that there's a problem with it, you don't wanna find out after something has went down and you need that backup, right? Um, in addition to that, I know from my own small business, uh, we had to really take incident response serious. Um, coming out, out of COVID and not knowing what's going to happen next, um, it's better to be prepared and creating those incident response plan will help you and your small business prepare for worst case scenarios. Um, next slide. Um, there's other things you can do. Um, if you have a router, secure that router. Um, change the default name to something that... Um, that won't be attractive to hackers or turn off remote management when you're not using it. Um, log out as the administrator if you're once you set up the router. Um, only allow access to certain individuals that have a need to be on that router so that you can limit access. Encrypt your devices. Um, make sure that they're anything that has sensitive information that you have some form of encryption. Um, use multi-factor authentication. I know a lot of us have used it now, even with our banks, they'll send us a code of some sort after we try to log in. That's for your protection to make sure that, that the person that originally is trying to log on is still the same person. So those are things that we can do um, as a small business to make sure that we are keeping ourselves safe. Next slide. Um, also, limit your login attempts, right? Um, so that you don't see that there's like multiple attempts trying to, to access something at one time, you know? Making sure that for physical security, this is a big one. Um, making sure that you just do things like store your documents in a locked cabinet and make sure that only the certain people that need access to those documents um, have access to it, right? You wouldn't give a stranger or just have open access to the keys to your home. It's the same thing with your small business. Um, protect your items. I always say, even with my um, employees, we have what I call a clean desk policy. At the end of each day, take off the things that are on your desk, lock them up, 
um, because they may not be important to where well, you may think it's not important to someone else, but I want to make sure that you are locking up any vital information um, about our customers or anything that you're working on, right? And then also um, create a security program. You know, make sure that you are educating your employees. Um, one thing that even for my small business, I do initial cybersecurity awareness training, which introduces um, all of my new employees to our culture and some of the things, security practices, best practices that we use. Um, and then we do reoccurring training quarterly. Um, and then we'll do some lunch and learn series where if there's new security concerns that are coming out that we address them so that they are up, they are abreast of all the new changes. So one of the, um, in the presentation after, after me will be, he'll kind of discuss um, some great resources to be able to create that security plan and another way to educate your employees. So um, take advantage of programs or, you know, or trainings that will help keep you well um, knowledgeable about what's, what's happening in the world and how to protect yourselves and your employees. Next slide. Um, so again, it's a shared responsibility, right? We wanna all do our due diligence to make sure that we keep ourselves safe, that we keep our small businesses from losing their, um, their reputation or losing their customers' confidence in them. So as, as we educate each other in the process and we hold each other accountable um, and joining webinars like this on your lunch break tells me that you take this uh, topic very seriously. So continue the conversations, um, you know, try to join as many webinars as you can, you know, take advantage of great products or um, opportunities like posture so that you can set yourself up in your business for success and to stay off the news because you know that's we don't want to end up on the news right um, because for us it could result in millions of dollars loss or even opportunities to even make millions of dollars right so if that's the goal you don't want to um, create an issue for yourselves or your small business or even future clients next slide um, so we can all do our part right um, by making sure that some of the nuggets that I shared today, even um, like before I call William said, he always tried to share to take at least one nugget away. So if there's one thing or one nugget that you could take away today and implement that in your security program um, that involves something technical in nature or just for just cultural adjustments, right? Having the conversation, educating your employees, creating a viable security program, making sure you have reoccurring tra training um, can all help us take a big step in fighting cybercrime and also making sure that we're doing our part to make sure that um, we are protecting ourselves and also the people that have entrusted us as our customers or sometimes even our stakeholders. Next slide. So my call to action to everyone. Um, cybersecurity is just not the, the next big business responsibility. It's a shared responsibility. Um, and that's for small business owners. I don't care if you have one employee or if you just only service five people. Uh, we have to keep our nation secure, and we also have to protect ourselves from crimes that are being committed that are causing loss of dollars and time and even sometimes conveniences. Um, so that is my um, call to action to everyone and to also just take one nugget from today and implement it in your organization. And I'm, I will promise you that it will make a world of difference. Next slide. So I'm gonna turn it over to my wonderful co-host today um, from Posture. Um, he has a wonderful program that will help some of these uh, security considerations that we I provided today, my little nuggets, um, to make them a little easier. Cause it's like, okay, what, how do I get started? Where do I get started? Um, what do I do? Um, Posture will definitely be a partner um, to you in helping creating a viable security program that will be 
very impactful to you and your employees, your stakeholders, and your customers. William? Thank you, Kiana and uh, Amanda. I'm, I'm very, very excited uh, you know, to be here today. I've, I've been working with um, um, SBDCs around the country for, um, you know, for a, a number of years. Uh, and as a small business owner, you know, nothing excites me more than you know, working and helping fellow small business owners. Um, you know, by way of introduction, my name is William McBurrow. I am the co-founder and chief security officer at um, Posture. And for the next 15 minutes or so, you will learn a lot about Posture. Uh, but I'm also a co-founder and CEO at a security consultant firm um, in DC, uh, MC Global Tech. And at MC Global Tech, we work with, you know, um, small and mid-sized businesses in, you know, highly regulated industries, right? Um, in organizations that have a regulatory and industry requirement to build security programs in order for them to, to um, compete. And, you know, I've, I've been in that space for, uh, for over 20 years. Uh, and, you know, when, when you run a consulting firm, you are working with, with companies that can afford to hire consulting firms. Uh, uh, and, and about three or four years ago, I, I actually started to work with um, SBDCs and provide counseling services to you know, fellow small business owners and help, and help sort of educate them on, you know, not just, not just cyber threats, not just vulnerabilities, but also the opportunities that being a cyber resilient organization brings to you. Uh, and that, that really led us to, you know, uh, co-founding a cybersecurity platform about three years ago called Posture. And our goal for Posture is to help small businesses build security programs in language and with resources that they can understand. And one of the ways that we do that is we create partnerships with organizations like SPDCs, you know, women business centers, you know, um, uh, minority supply development councils, you know, any organizations that help, you know, small business entrepreneurs, you know, underserved entrepreneurs to help give them access to cybersecurity resources. <clears throat> you know, as a consultant with, with, with MC Global Tech, most of our clients come to us with a set of requirements in hand. Right. I want to sell to the government. Here is a list of 100 things. I don't understand it. Right. Oh, I'm trying to sell to a corporate buyer and their supplier risk management team has contacted me with a questionnaire. And I don't understand half of the things that are, you know, that are on here. So what, what we're finding more and more is that cybersecurity requirements are now becoming a barrier to doing business for small businesses. Right. Even organizations that get you know the various small business certifications mbe dbe wbes etc right yes you have an opportunity to work with larger partners but part of their onboarding is a security risk management question there that you have to respond to and typically most organizations aren't doing anything on there so part of what what we've done is we've created a partnership with the BASBDC to work with Amanda and her team, to work with your very own cybersecurity expert, Kiana, to, to help provide you tools, to give you the means to make cybersecurity part of your business and do it in a way that makes sense to you, do it in a way that you're able to implement over time so that now you have an opportunity, as you see on the list, to, to put into action the call to action that you just heard, right? You know, Kiana left you all with a lot of very timely security considerations and recommended and um, recommendations. What what I'm here to do is to help provide a resource to actually get it done, to make it part of your business, to work on it over time, and to be able to track your progress with access to resources built into the platform to help you better secure your business, 
right? To help you better protect yourself and your um, customers. But I think for more importantly from, for us as small business owners to help open up new opportunities for us. So a lot of resources out there that provides you with a checklist of things that you should do, right? And now you were told to go forth and multiply, right? Uh, uh, you know, most, most of us would probably agree with 100% of what Keanu just shared, but a week from now when you are doing what a typical small business owner does, juggling 50 other things, it's not going to be top of mind. So posture is being provided as a resource to help you manage this over time and track your progress. Uh, next slide, please, Amanda. So what is posture, right? Um, Posture is a platform to help you build a cybersecurity program at your own pace. Within the program, we provide you security awareness training. Kiana mentioned that for her organization, she has onboarding security training for all her new employees. She has ongoing security awareness activities to help keep security top of mind for all of our staff, we provide security training for you as a SBDC client directly into the platform. But also, in addition to the great services that you have from your SBDC cybersecurity expert, we have access to cybersecurity advisory built into the platform on a task by task level, as well as the ability to, to sort of reach out to our risk management team for any questions you uh, might have. Uh, so part of our goal is, again, to, to help you make cybersecurity part of your business in a way that makes sense to you. Uh, and just what I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about our partnership with the um, BASBDC. Next slide, please. So how do, we, how do we do that? One of the things that I've found working as a consultant for many, many years is the most limited resource within my customer base is time, right? Over the years, I've had clients that would hire us to work with them and pay us to do so or can scarcely find the time to, to run through all the steps that we're recommending, to spend the time in building and improving their cybersecurity resilience because time is a very precious resource for the small business owner. When we looked at, divine, at, at, at designing the partnership platform, there were two Two, two prevailing sort of goals. One was to make it simple. And trust me, for someone who comes from a technical background, this is probably iteration 10, right? My, my, my uh, co-founder, uh, uh, you know, Stacy Kirk would, would you know, send, me, send me back to work. We're like, nope, that, that's still too complicated. Nope, we have to make it simpler. We have to make it easier. We have to make it in a place that even the most non-technical small business owner can actually understand what they have to do in order to make a business decision about how much of it that they do do, right? Uh, but the second part of it was uh, to, to make it easy and to make it quick, right? One of the things that I've found as a cybersecurity consultant, again, you spend a lot of time sort of interviewing, assessing, uh, you know, small business enterprises, and typically you're finding the very same things, right? And a lot of times, you know, you are th th that that time is it is better spent getting an understanding of the client's environment and providing them with initial set of recommendations versus giving them a you know 50 page report with 49 pages of you're not doing X, you're not doing Y, you're not doing Z. I don't find that to be helpful. So within the posture platform. When you log onto, onto the platform, within two to three screens, you get to develop a company profile just based on basic facts about your organization, right? Your, your um, industry, right? What kinds of data do you have access to? Do you store? Do you um, transmit? Who do you share that data with? A lot of these are critical risk factors that allows the platform to create a risk profile for your organization. And based on that risk profile, we then recommend for you a cyber, a targeted cybersecurity program level. Now, our methodology is based on 
the de facto global standard for managing cyber risk programs. That is the NIST cybersecurity framework. However, as awesome as it is, the NIST cybersecurity framework has over a hundred best practices. So me telling you, go do these 100 things. I mean, that's, that's a non-starter for most organizations, right? So what we've done is we've organized that framework into a level-based implementation here, starting with the most basic, the simplest, the easiest to implement, and the set that matches both the most common security requirements that buyers are requesting, but also that provides you immediate value, right? And based on that, we create a level one security program that over time you can mature by adding more best practices, implementing more steps to meet your targeted level. But I believe the best part of the platform is that with each level, we gave you a cybersecurity playbook that walks you step by step in implementing the security considerations and recommendations that you just heard from Kiana. So with that, next, next slide and then. So, so now this is my call to action, right? I believe you all will receive a copy of, the, of, the, of these slides. Here you have is the URL to sign on to our VASBDC partnership. With this partnership, it gives you a free access to the Posture cybersecurity platform. This is your opportunity to become the cybersecurity hero that your business needs. So with that, um, I'm going to do a quick demo of the, um, of, of the um, platform, at least to highlight some of the things that I believe are most um, critical for you. Um, Amanda, if you can give me sharing capabilities. I will do that. I think you should be able to share now that I've stopped. Okay. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah, we can see it. It's always a juggle when you have three monitors, but um, uh, so what, what you have my, my on, on the screen is the URL that I shared. This is the SBDC, the Virginia SBDC and Posture signup page. This page gives you a brief overview of the Posture platform. This video is about two minutes long. Um, it also walks through all of the benefits of the cybersecurity partnership program that you have access to and allows you to um, sign up. When you sign up, you're going to get access to the Posture Cybersecurity Platform. So I'm going to walk you through a few key elements of the platform. So first you see, um, let's minimize the picture here. So first you see here on the upper left of your dashboard, right, your current level. One of the things that you saw in the graphic is that again, your target program is a level by level development of your cybersecurity pro program over time. So the dashboard allows you to track the maturity of your cybersecurity program. But in your upper right here, you have your target level. You know, in, in this demo um, account, you see that this provides you with information about your company profile assessment and your recommended cybersecurity program level. And if I can read this very briefly, so based on your profile, your organization has an elevated risk exposure. Why? Due to participation in highly targeted industry, this could be financial sector, healthcare, government contracting, sensitive data, this could be if you are capturing financial data, personal identifiable information, um, uh, protected health information and third party access. If again, you have other companies that have access to either your networks or your systems. The recommendation of the platform is a uh, target a level three cyber program to implement essential data protection policies, training tools and processes to assess and manage the risk to your data and your systems, right? So with each profile, 
you, you get an analysis of your current risk with recommendations of the level of cyber program that you must create. Now, the star of the show, though, is your playbook. So what we have on the screen here is a level one cyber program playbook. So what is a playbook? The playbook takes your cybersecurity goals at that level and breaks it up into milestones. And these milestones describe the goals of what you should achieve at that level. And you will see ex an example of this shortly. Each milestone is broken down into easy to understand tasks that even the least technical small business owner can read and understand what they have to do and why. And within these tasks, you have access to resources. These could be templates, they could be guide documents, et cetera. And within the platform for, for, for um, tasks that might require you to secure a third party service or product, right? It could be um, a secure um, backup solution. It could be antivirus software, um, et cetera. What we've done is we've worked with providers to identify easy to implement affordable product solutions. And we've added it to a marketplace in the platform to provide you with an option to know the kinds of products and services that you might have to get over time. So with that said, I'm going to show you what your level one cyber program playbook looks like. As you can see, this playbook is divided up into four milestones. The first is establish security rules for your organization, right? In order to manage your cybersecurity risk within your organization, you need a set of rules to guide the business owner, your employees, your partners, and other stakeholders. Milestone two is training, right? Training your employees. Mistakes by employees account for well over 80% of cyber incidents. Milestone three is protecting your data. And milestone four is protecting your devices. So you can see that each of these milestones are broken up into a number of tasks, right? So within the policy milestones, there are three tasks. Establish a security policy for your organization, define security roles and responsibilities, share your security policies with all stakeholders. And we provide you with a security policy template that aligns with the appropriate level of your playbook. So again, easy to understand task, easy to understand language, resources that allows you to then track your completion of those tasks, right? As well as track evidence and add comments to help you better keep track of the activities that you have performed. So Kiana left you all with a set of security recommendations and considerations. You will find all of those in here from training your employees, right? To you know, limiting access to your systems, to enabling strong authentication, to leveraging encryption, right? All of those basic cybersecurity best practices, you see backing up your data, you will find them here in your level one playbook because those are the most necessary of security best practices that you must implement. As another example, right? Um, within this milestone number three, protecting your data, right? Um, you have recommendations around how to create strong passwords. There's a resource that guides you through how to create strong passwords, right? Enabling multi-factor authentication. There's a resource that guides you through how you enable multi-factor authentication, right? Using encryption and protecting your data. Most businesses today use either a Windows operating system or a MacBook operating systems. Both of those operating systems have built-in encryption to encrypt the entire hard drive. We provide you with a guide that walks you through how to do that with both the Windows and the MacBook operating systems. 
another thing that I will point out here for you real briefly before I close is that you have recommendations here to provide training. You know, if you click on the free resource, you will see that built into the platform for you, and you have access to this through the DASBDC partnership, is a learning management system that is built directly into the platform that allows you to get access to, again, brief topical security training that you can implement for yourself and for your um, employees. Each training video is about three to five minutes long, followed by a knowledge check to help you test your knowledge. And part of the, and lastly, part of what I believe is the best part of um, uh, the um, platform is that as you work your way through your playbook, right? If you come across questions, you know, guides that you think might be helpful, questions about how a specific requirements might relate to your specific business operations, you have an opportunity on your lower right within the, uh, the message um, bot um, and to either post your um, question directly or, you know, request a one-on-one -on -one follow up meeting. Part of our goal is to create a platform that meets you, the small business owner, where you are. And I, I'm, and again, I'm, 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 I'm very excited about the opportunity to, to partner with you know, your VA SBDC to be able to provide these resources to you and to help create more cyber resilient small businesses. This is, this is an area that you know, I'm especially part, uh, passionate about because at the end of the day, no matter how much of a you know, security professional practitioner I am, my entire life depends on small businesses, right? Um, from the, you know, from the um, you know, um, companies that come to my home to help me with you know, cleaning and, and you know, yard work or you know, plumbers and, and, and any, any, any other type of those you know, specialty skills uh, to you know, companies that I work directly with. Um, you, know, you, you might think you know, in general that we don't depend on small businesses, but the, the largest organization that you do business with, that you purchase from, they all depend on an entire supply chain of small businesses. And I think you know, creating a more secure small business community benefits all of us. Uh, and that's why, you know, as a, as a business owner, as a security evangelist, I'm always seeking out opportunities where I can partner with organizations like the VA SBDC, with, with cybersecurity experts like um, Kiana Gini to see how we can create a greater impact. Uh, so with that said, um, I believe there's some time being left for um, questions. I'll be happy to, 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 to answer any questions that you all might have uh, and, you know, see you in the posture. Amazing. Thank you, William. So not only did we leave you with some recipes, like I call, you know, the, the recommendations, we also gave you a recipe book. We gave you some recipes that you can make at home. We gave you some food for thought. We even gave you somewhere where you can get the recipes. So thank you, William. Um, the Virginia SBDC has, um, this partnership will really be a great benefit to small business owners, because like you said, they are the backbone of this country, and we utilize them for from everything from, you know, our favorite coffee to our favorite retailers. Um, and we want to create an ecosystem that they they can feel secure to be a part of and to also play their part. So thank you, um, Virginia SBDC, for um, putting together this partnership, putting together this wonderful webinar. I hope that everyone left here with at least one nugget and also uh, I'm gonna give another call to action to sign up a posture because if you just are struggling on where to get started and I know we covered a lot, but I think that posture will definitely simplify. I think that your co-founder definitely 
um, made sure it was speaking to the small business owner that it didn't seem so technical or so like unattainable that anyone can do this. Um, all we need to do is, is spend the time and it could be minimal. I mean, even from the training videos being three minutes, I mean, we all have three minutes, right? Um, and then even having a knowledge check at the end, that's amazing. So thank you, William. Thank you, Posture. Thank you, Virginia SBDC. Uh, I think we'll just leave some room now for any questions. I think another slide will have our contact information. And if you want to schedule a one-on-one uh, with myself, um, maybe you want some help with setting up Posture, I'm here to help you. Um, I'm here to help navigate and answer any questions. And even so amazing that even in the tool, they have where you can leave a question or you can post you know, for more information. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. So I'm so excited about this. I'm, I, I joined William in the sentiments of being in the profession for so many years and you know, being able to serve um, our small business owners. This is amazing. So very excited about that. So I guess we'll leave room for some questions. Great, we have a couple questions. So thank you both for the awesome presentation. Um, I have a couple questions in here and everyone else who's still in here, if you um, wanna put a question in the q and A, I I see someone's raised their hand, but if you wouldn't mind typing it in the Q&A box, that would be uh, preferred. Um, and we have two experts here today. So any cybersecurity questions, please. Um, so we have just one comment to start. This is great. Thank you. I've been stressing about this and I feel better with this resource to support me. Thank you so much. Um, someone would like to know how regularly is the information in posture updated? So the, the, the risk management framework in, in posture is based on the current version of the NIST cybersecurity framework, right? So this is designed to help you build a standard-based security risk management program. Um, it's, the, it's not exactly tied to a specific compliance framework. There are compliance modules in the platform, but the risk management playbook is not tied to a specific compliance framework. Uh, what I would add is that as you sort of navigate the sea of industry and government security compliance framework, they all come down to the same set of basic security press practices, right? These aren't being recreated, right? They're the same foundations that we've been talking about for 30 years, right? Now they're being applied to new business environment, and new technology, but if you have a core foundational cybersecurity program, you are able to respond positively, right? To the you know, ever evolving list of cybersecurity and privacy regulations that are coming out of both the government and industry. Um, if you need to have some conversation about specific compliance framework, uh, that's what I guess Kiani is here for, and even I, I can help with that as well. Thank you so much. Um, how consistent is the posture information with the US national security guidelines and the European GDPR guidelines? So again, that, that's just a follow up to my um, previous, um, previous response, right? So the um, GDPR guidelines, especially the, the ones that are focused on security uh, not, not so much the privacy requirements, right? It's really focused on implementing an infrastructure and having policies, processes, and technology in place to protect the confidentiality, the integrity, and the availability of IT systems that hold, you know, uh, proprietary, sensitive, and personal information of customers globally, right? Um, those those security best practices flow back to a core set of security controls. And what you find by building cybersecurity based on the NIST cybersecurity framework, you will inherently be responding to those requirements because again, it's the same set of core um, best practices. We do have modules within the platforms that help you track compliance frameworks, but understanding our approach with um, posture, doing a step back. With MC Global Tech, in 
my my consulting team works with a lot of small businesses, primarily within the government contract and the DOD space, right? And when you say to a small business owner, oh, your small business is subject to these new acquisition regulations that now require you to implement these 110 requirements to continue to do business with the DOD, typically there's only two responses, panic or panic, right? Uh, part of what our approach is for posture is to help guide you to building a maturity-based program over time. If you have an, imme an immediate business need to get compliance, that's a different conversation that we can help with. But our goal here with Posture is to make a cybersecurity program accessible to every organization, right? So you have the ability to understand what you have to, you know, to do. Start with easy, simple, easy to implement steps. And you can mature, mature over time. You can get complicated in as quickly as you want to get complicated, but it doesn't always have to be complicated. And that's what posture is for. Great, thank you so much. I don't see any more questions right now. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen and um, mention, uh, so, someone mentioned they were having trouble with the link. So just so you know, I shared the link in the chat here to sign up for the posture um, program here. And um, also I put a few, you tried a second time. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, so it's working now. Yeah, so yeah, and Williams also put his email there in the chat. Um, so yeah, if you have any one-on-one -on -one counseling, uh, for one-on-one -on -one counseling or questions, we have help at virginiaspdc.org. If you wanna sign up for our future webinars or access past webinars, um, it's uh, virginiaspdc.org slash training. I've also shared a link to meet with Kiana for one-on-one -on -one counseling, and that's um, a Calendly link there in the chat. You can sign up to meet with her. Um, I don't see any other questions. If so, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close us out for the day. So I just wanna let everybody know you're all gonna receive an email with the link to the recording and the slides. And we'll also share the links that we shared here in the chat today. Um, be sure to check out the next webinar in our series. It's all about the data on May 11th. That'll be next week. Um, as I mentioned, this webinar and other SBDC resources are designed to be used in collaboration with your local SBDC advisors. Make sure you can sign up for a free and confidential session by emailing help at virginiasbdc.org. Thank you so much for attending today. Um, thank you so much, William and Kiana. It was a great presentation and hopefully we'll see all of you next week. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you, this is wonderful. See you next week. Bye. Bye.